Okay, so let's do this FE questions for binomial distribution. So before we begin, we know we have the equation on page 67 in the FE handbook 10.0.1. So here I rewrote the equation just to avoid copyright by using the reference handbook. So I'm going to do this a lot in the future. So we have the equation and we're told P is the probability of success, Q is the probability of failure x is going to be the set we're looking at so let's say they're asking us to look at two out of the eight samples right or three out of the eight that's our x value what we're asked there is the x value and we know n is going to be the number of trials right n is the number of trials and we can find the total probability it's going to be this equation and this c the combination it depends on n and x right so this is the number of combinations this term and we know it can be multiplied by this term. But the number of combinations you might recall from the previous section in the handbook is this equation. So we take this equation, multiply it by this, and we get the total probability for a specific x value. So we know here it depends on the probability of success and the probability of failure. So on the FE, when you have this kind of situation, it's either you have success or failure. So those are the only two cases you can get. You know you're going to look at binomial distribution. And lastly, the handbook also talks about the variance. It's just sigma squared, right? And the standard deviation is just sigma. But we take sigma squared is going to be the number of trials times p, which is the probability of success, and q is the probability of failure. And this is the variance, right? So the standard deviation is just going to be the square root of this, right? We take the square root of both sides to find the standard deviation. So you have to take the square root of both sides to cancel the squared. So our standard deviation is going to be the square root of n p times q. That's just the extra note, just in case, right? So here we're going to be focusing on using the calculator mostly. So we're told for the first part is that for a specific manufacturer, 30% of the 3D printed parts fail. The probability that two out of the random selection of eight fail is most nearly what? So you should pause the video. Let me fix this. So you should now pause the video and attempt to get an answer. So pause it and see if you get an answer for this first portion. So what do we want? We know the probability of failure is 30% for these 3D printed parts. Let's write that first. The probability of failure equals 30%, which is 0 0.30. The probability that two parts, so our x value that we want to look at is 2, 2 parts out of the random selection of 8, which is the n value. Essentially, our number of trials is 8, right? So here we can use the equation or we know this equation works for this kind of situation, but it never works for cumulative, right? It would work for this kind of situation because it's just a single outcome. We just want to find the probability at that x value. It's not cumulative, right? So this would work and we need the probability of success. So the probability of success here in this specific case is 70%, right? So 0 0.70. Q is going to be 0 0.30. We know N, we know X, and we can just solve for it using this equation. But what I want to do here is focus on using the calculator because it can be quickly done. So let's open my calculator. And what you should do, do first is go to second, reset, click yes, reset it. Then you go to second, go to data, then go to distribution, and we're going to go to binomial PDF. So number four, P is for probability, and it's for a single outcome. So we're going to use number four. For cumulative, we would use five. C is for cumulative. So we're going to do four for this first question. So click enter, click single. That's what we want. The trials is eight. Good. The probability here is says success on the calculator, but be careful. This is the probability that you're looking at. Here we're focusing on failure. So plug in 0 0.30, right? If we were looking at success, we would plug in 0 0.70. Here we're focusing on failure. So be careful, plug in 0 0.30 and X is going to be two. So press enter, calculate, and we get our answer. The value here is around 0 0.296, which is going to be D.
So what this says is the there's a 30% probability that two parts out of the random eight fail. That's all it says there. So now let's look at this one. This is more tricky. Because here, the probability that at most four of the materials fail is most nearly what? So here we're looking at an at most question. So we want to look at most four of these parts fail. Essentially, that's meant by the materials here. It's the parts. At most four fail. So what do we do here? So what's tricky here is we have to know what to use in the calculator. So you can go second same thing distribution and go to binomial cdf cumulative because we want to combine the probability at zero that zero fail the probability that one fails the probability that two fails the probability that three fail and we want to add the probability that four fail so click that and we're taking the summation of all of those and you can you have to go to all go to the very last and click all so the trials here is just 8, right? So let's write down our n value. n value is still 8. It relates to this question. And we know we're looking at most 4. So x value is going to equal 2. So going back to our calculator, the trials, sorry, it's not the x value you do not consider for cumulative. Just focus on the n value. But the probability here we need, right? and it's for failure and it's just the same right 0 0.30 so let me go back and we have n we have p and p failure 0 0.30 n is 8 click enter just click calculate so here it should give us what this means is this is the first number is the probability that 0 fail the second number is the probability that 1 fails Third number is the probability that at most two fail, this one at most three fail, and this one at most four fail. So once again, this the first number is the probability that at most zero fail. So essentially zero fail. This is the probability that one fail, the probability at most two fail, the probability at most three fail, and this is the probability at most four fail. So our correct answer here should be 0 0.94. So essentially 94%. And you just got to be careful here. We always start with 0. 0 fail, 1, 2, 3, 4. At most 4, 0 0.94. So here it should be D. This is D. So now let's look at this next question. The probability that at least 3 fail. So N is still 8. P fail is the same. And we're looking at a cumulative question. So let's go in our calculator. So we go, it's still the same data, right? So we're still using the same data because N and P do not change. But here we're looking at least three of the materials fail. So what's happening here essentially is we have, what we're given is the data. And what we're given essentially is 0 0.0576. This is 0 0.2553. This is 0 0.5518. Let me just write all of these. 05. So this is 059. This is 0 0.9420. This is the at most 4, right? This value. This is 0 0.9887. This is 0 0.9987. This is 0 0.9999. And we have at the end 1.0. And what happens here, if this is 8, this will be 7, this is 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, so let me, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. So that's what we have. This is the probability, right? And this is essentially 0 fail. This is at most 1 fails is this probability. So it's being added. That's why we call it cumulative. But here we're looking at least. So for at most from above, what we did was just do this, right? We just added all of these up to this point. This was at most. And it was the summation, right? And we got this answer. The calculator did that for us. Now we're looking at least 3. So we know here... 
this is one that fails, that is zero fail, this is one fails, two fails, three fails. So at least three is going to be this. So at least three is going to be the summation of this. So what that means is we have to essentially take the summation of all of this up to eight for at least. And how do we get that? The easiest way to get that is to find the value here and we just take one minus this value, right? So for that, the probability there is going to be one because the total is one, right? The summation of the total probability is always one. We take 1.0 minus what? Minus this value. Be careful. For at least, you take 1.0 minus 0 0.5. 518 and for that let me check my math that you should get around 0 0.45 and this should be our answer so it should be a hope this helps you